Come home to Jesus. This is the message that Max Solbrecken has proclaimed for 50 years to multitudes across the world. His crusades have taken him to the Hindus of India, Muslims of Pakistan, Buddhists of Sri Lanka, voodoo worshippers of Haiti, Catholics of Malta, and headhunters of northern Luzon. He has preached God's Word in stadiums, churches, tents, universities, and prisons. He comes to you today with the message of God's love and power. The man who is not afraid to preach the truth, Pastor Max Solbrecken. Hallelujah. I wish to read from 1 John chapter 5. Remain standing, please. I want to read two verses of Scripture. Most of you have heard about George Mueller in England, the man who fed all those orphans for all those years. How many have heard about him? George, actually is Muller, but we call him Mueller. He was an Englishman. And the verses that he used mostly to get all these, uh, all the food in for those thousands of orphans was 1 John 5, 14 and 15. These were the two verses that he used mainly, mostly, when he needed some great shipment of food for 3,000 orphans. And just like that, they were sitting at the table and it was delivered. That happened again and again and again, hundreds and hundreds of times. And he was called the Apostle of Faith. And he was just a humble fellow, just nondescript, but had a burden for children, for orphans. Everyone in the church mostly have heard about him. 1 John chapter 5. Verses 14 and 15, reading as follows in Jesus' name. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Now watch this. And if we know that he hear us, what shall we ask? We know that we have the petitions we decide of him. Amen. This is the confidence that we have in him, the faith we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, it has to be according to his will, he hears us. And if we believe that he hears us, if we believe that he hears us, we can have the petition we have asked. That's an amazing text. If we believe that he hears us, this little Norwegian lady walked up to her pastor and she said, Pastor, I am through praying. He said, why? God doesn't hear me. He said, of course he hears you. No, he does not hear me. Are you sure that he doesn't hear you? I'm positive. Well, then why don't you stand here and begin to curse and swear? She said, Pastor. He said, why? Why not? God will hear me. God will hear me. <laughs> Jack, come. God will hear you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Precious Savior. Father, we thank, that, thank you this morning that we can have confidence. Confidence, Father, in the word that you've given to us. You, confidence in knowing that you will hear us when we pray. Oh, Jesus. Heavenly Father, this morning we ask that you would just envelop this congregation yes, yes, with the yes. power of your spirit. Oh, yes. Wrap your loving arms around the, the congregants oh, that are Jesus. before me this morning, Father, yes. that they would feel the presence of Almighty yes, God Father, yes. ministering into their lives oh, yes. as we sing the the, the songs of praise as we worship before oh. you as the power of the Spirit of God ministers oh, from you, this Lord. pulpit this we morning. Heavenly Father, as the word goes out, Hallelujah. may your spirit just envelop this congregation oh, this morning. Yes. We ask this favor now yes. in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son yes. and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. In Christ we pray.
Amen. And everyone Amen. shout, Amen. Amen. Say, and God heard us. God hears us. Remain standing. I wish to read 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Reading as follows in Jesus' name. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. Our unbelief doesn't stop him. He cannot deny himself. Father, in Jesus' name, bless your word today. And this wonderful congregation here, House of Prayer, Highway 623. Bless all those round about, the entire community. And send a marvelous revival, oh God, I pray, in Alberta, in Canada. Touch the hearts of the people. For Christ's sake and in Jesus' name. And everyone, would you shout a great big amen. amen. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. I am saved by grace alone, through faith alone, and in Christ alone. And shout a great big hallelujah. And you may be seated, please. I want to speak on the subject, oh God, you cannot deny yourself. Oh God, you cannot deny yourself. St. Paul says that even if we don't believe, yet he abides faithful. He cannot deny himself. And I began to think about that and and I was just seeking God. And I said, God, you cannot deny your word. You cannot deny the promises of Jesus. You cannot deny the prayers of Jesus. You cannot deny the cry of the Holy Spirit that comes up through us. You cannot deny the blood of Jesus. Because the blood of Jesus brings miracles and healings and deliverance. The prayers of Jesus certainly are being answered. For he prays for us constantly. And the Holy Spirit, you cannot deny the groanings of the Holy Spirit, Lord. I had quite a session with God when I got the message. And I've preached it a few times. He said, come now. Let us reason together. See it, the Lord. I see at 118. Come now and reason with me. I want to talk with you about your life and my promises. My word. Talk to you. I want to ask you some questions. Do you really believe? Are you expecting a miracle? Have you turned your back on the devil and the world and the flesh? What is your position spiritually with your brothers and sisters in Christ, with the church? He's come, let's talk things over. Let's talk about God and the devil, heaven and hell, sin and salvation. Healing and deliverance. Let's talk about your unbelief. God's not unreasonable. He's very reasonable. He wants to sit down with us. And he wants to talk to us. And answer some questions. And so I preached this the first time was in Saskatchewan a few years ago. Carl Keeley had called me and said, can you come down and preach? We're going to have a tent up on the Indian Reservation. 
not far from Margo, Saskatchewan. I said, I'll come. So we went down there, and I preached it. Power got, fell like rain. Oh, God, you cannot deny yourself. Jesus and I am the way, the truth, and the life. The truth. I believe this book. I believe it. All my heart, I believe it. It's true. The word is true. Precious Jesus. Jesus said, if you have a need, ask me. St. James said, if you need wisdom, ask him. He'll give it to you. Ask him. But when you ask him, ask him in faith, believing it will happen. Believing it will happen. First of all, say, God, you cannot deny your word. Isaiah 45 tells us what he thinks about his own word. Isaiah 45 and verse number 23. Precious Jesus, I have sworn by myself the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness. It shall not return Verse number 18, thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord. There's none else. Verse number 5, I am the Lord. There's none beside. There's none else. There's no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun, from the west, that there's none beside me. I am the Lord, and there's none else. I form the light. I create darkness. I make peace. I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. I was sitting on the platform in Guntur, Andhra Pradesh, in India, 1966. I think it was the month of May. 2,000 people had gathered. The Indians, they sit on the grass, on the ground. Black people usually stand. They will stand for hours. But Indian people sit. They always sit. Men over here, women over there. I was sitting there with 20,000 people, I think, approximately 20,000 at the end of the crusade. And they begged me to stay longer. I couldn't do it. There were 95% Hindus, and they begged me to stay. The government officials had been there 10 days. And it was hot, really hot. I was sitting there, and all of a sudden, I heard a voice saying, Son, you're helping to fulfill my word. I looked around. Who's talking to me? Nobody. I said, Lord, is this you? He said, You're helping to fulfill my word. I said, How could I, a simple country preacher from Canada, help you to fulfill your word? He said, I want you to ask your interpreter, Brother Vandenham, how many people here have never heard the name of Jesus? He said, about well, 95%. Then the Lord said, turn to Isaiah. There it is. I read it to you. Look unto me and be saved all the ends of the earth. I am God, there's none else. I have sworn by myself. He says that it is his, going back to, to verse number five, or verse number six, I guess, that they may know 
from the rising of the sun and from the west that there's none beside me. I am the Lord. There's none else. He said there's 95% have never heard the name of Jesus and now they've heard it and my word is being fulfilled. Because it's his desire that everyone from the east to the west hears the gospel. Oh, is it a strong faith in the word of God? The word of God. I was preaching in, it was 1965 and I was in La Centre Evangelique in Montreal. And that's when the devil attacked me. I had flown, I had flown down to Toronto, taken the train to Montreal. It was late. I was staying in this Bible school. The dormitory was right there in the Bible school with it. I'd gone to bed and the devil's presence was in the room. Awakened me. I felt his presence and I didn't like it. And I commanded him to leave. It took me about 15 minutes before he left. I fell asleep in a deep sleep and all of a sudden I was awakened. The presence of the devil was so strong in that room. It took me half an hour to get rid of him. I turned on the light and I began to preach to him. Read the scripture. Finally he left. I fell asleep in a deep sleep. Eight o'clock in the morning, there was a knock on my door. Brother Max, Brother Max, there's a woman, one of the students is in trouble. Put some clothes on, ran down the corridor. There were about five or six students in that room. And this woman, this uh, the Bible school student, this young lady, was lying there and could not close her mouth. Her mouth was wide open. I knew it was the devil. I prayed in the name of Jesus and after about five or ten minutes, suddenly her one jaw loosened. I said, it'll be okay. The devil's gone. I had five minutes to get down to the students where they were having their morning service. I was to speak. I was walking down towards my room and all of a sudden, I felt somebody slugged me, someone hit me in my solar plexus. Now I was trained in boxing to take any blow if I saw it coming. But if I didn't see it coming, that's the worst place right here. Immediately, I was as weak as a kitten. And I almost fell, I caught myself and, and I staggered over to the washroom. Within five seconds, I was as sick as a dog eating grass. I fell over the toilet bowl and said, oh God, I hate, I don't want to vomit. I don't like it. I didn't vomit. I got up and I looked at myself in the mirror. And I looked terrible. I looked like an old man. Sweat just pouring off me. I was unsteady. I fixed my hair and I got cleaned myself a bit, bit and walked over. And I had to go downstairs. And I walked down the step holding on to the railing. And I stood at the door of that room. The door was open. I stood and I heard the person there in charge say, Reverend Solbrecht will now speak to you. I walked towards the pulpit. I was unsteady. But I knew that once I opened the Bible, I knew I'd be healed. Because my faith in the word of God was so strong. I chose quite a lengthy passage. And I, the more I read, the better I felt. When I had read that about 20 verses or so, I was normal. I was well. I told them what had happened. I said, this place is filled with demons. And I'm calling for a three-day fast at the La Center Evangelique on Papanau Street, a big Pentecostal church where I was preaching. And all the students would come down there and back me up. 
I was on the third day of the fast, and Emil the saint was a great interpreter, but he was dry. He was powerful and a wonderful man, but he was dry. Great interpreter. And I was talking about Jesus Christ rising from the dead, and I forgot about him. I heard him say, Brother Solbrick and Brother Solbrick, and I kept preaching. For about three or four minutes, you know, where Jesus Christ grabbed the hold of the bars of death, hell, and the grave, and rose from the dead. And a young lady was standing out in the foyer, rocking a little baby in her arms. She saw a ball of fire hanging over our heads, Emil and myself. And that thing burst, and flames fell on everybody. And they all jumped to their feet and ran to the altars. And revival broke loose. Revival broke loose. We had a great revival. The word of God. God, you can't deny your word. When Martin Luther came back from where he was at, and Philip Melanchthon, his, the great theologian that worked with him, a young man, was ill, was dying. And when he came into the room, Philip Melanchthon was lying there, almost dead. And he said, I threw my, my satchel against the wall. I locked the door. No one's coming in, and God, you're not leaving. <laughs> I'm locking you in. He said, I threw, I shouted the promises of God into his ears for about an hour. And all of a sudden, he heard, Luther, stop praying and let me die. He said, if you die, I excommunicate you. Nurse, bring him some broth. He said, I want to die. I don't want any broth. If you die before me, I excommunicate you. Martin Luther said, I found him in the last stages of death by an evident miracle of God. He lives. And Philip Melanchthon rose said, Martin Luther found me dead. But by the grace of God, I'm alive. He outlived Martin Luther. Can you shout hallelujah? I believe the word of God. The heavens and the earth will pass away. But not one jot or one tittle will pass from the law until all is fulfilled. All is fulfilled. All is fulfilled. All. Precious Jesus. Precious Jesus. Numbers 23. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of a man that he should repent or change. Has he spoken it? Shall it not come to pass? Yes, of course. It will come to pass. God is not a man. Some will say, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of a man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Wow. His word is true. God, you can't deny your word. And Father, you can't deny the prayers of Jesus from the cross. So, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They were guilty, and so are we. Forgive them. They know not what they do. John's gospel, Jesus prayed for us, to his father, in the high priestly prayer. John 17. Precious Jesus. John 17 and verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. 
Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I sent, have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the word. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That they may be one. As thou, Father, art in me, and I am thee, that thou also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I and them, thou and me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as Thou hast loved. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. We're a part of this. As he sent them, he sends us. He's praying for us all, all the time. He's praying. Praying for us. Prayers of Jesus. And Father, you cannot deny the promise of Jesus. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receives. He that seeks finds. To him that knocks it shall be opened. Matthew eleven twenty. 20. Come unto me all you labor. And are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Father we want that rest. We need our prayers answered. We need forgiveness and healing and deliverance. And joy and peace. And protection and prosperity. Acts 1 and 8. Ye shall receive power. Jesus promised us power. Father. Let's have it. Let's have it Father. We're coming now. To receive what you promised. Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you with me? Matthew 28, 19 and 20. All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Precious Jesus, precious Jesus. And Jesus said unto them, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you all the way. Even unto the end of the world. All ways is a term of, of time. But all way is a, is a term for a distance. I'll go with them the whole distance, he's saying. He's saying, I will stay with you till the bitter end. All the way. All the way. The promise of Jesus. John's gospel, the 14th chapter. Here's some more promise of Jesus. 14, verse number 11. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Amen. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. I will do it. And I'll pray the Father. He shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. 
because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. The Holy Spirit is in us. The Holy Spirit has something to say too about this thing. All the promise, we used to sing it, the pro all the promise in the book are mine. Every chapter, verse, every line. Did you ever sing it? Vine. Every promise in the book is mine. Every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. And I'm living in his love divine. Every promise in the book is mine. Every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. I'm dwelling in his love divine. Every promise in the book is mine. And then what about the groanings of the Holy Spirit? It says in the book of Romans, the eighth chapter, listen carefully to this powerful scripture. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 26. And it says here, likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. He prays through us, and the original, literal original says, he takes a hold of against our infirmities and holds it away and prays through us. It's as though if a snake were to bite you and you grab it underneath the gills, hold it, push it away. So you can kill it. When we pray and we can't pray anymore, the Spirit comes through us, begins to speak to us in other tongues. And as he does, he pushes away the sickness until he can pray to the Father. He takes a hold of against, against the infirmity. And he prays through us. We don't know what we're saying, but the Holy Spirit knows. And he talks through us to the Father. Father, you cannot deny the groanings of the Holy Spirit. You can't. A God who is true cannot deny his word, cannot deny his son's prayers, cannot deny the promise of Jesus, cannot deny the groanings of the Holy Spirit, and cannot deny our heartfelt cry. He can't do it. He cannot do it. Let, look at Romans 8.14. 8.14 For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, we may also be glorified together. Someone say hallelujah, hallelujah. Slip up your hands and shout hallelujah. Begin to praise him. Begin to praise him for a few moments. He is here in our midst. I know that. And we're going to talk to him. We're going to call upon his name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, precious Jesus. Oh, kalamasika lalalaba shikri andarama noturabo sundama hindarama kashakarama Dr. Henry C. Maybe, he wrote in the book, The Crucibility of the Cross, dealing with 1 Corinthians 1.18. He says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But on us which believe or are saved, it is the power of God. In his book, The Cruciality of the Cross, Dr. Henry C. Maybe states the Greek word here in 1 Corinthians 1.18 is logos. Not preaching, but the subject matter of preaching with the very essence of that which was to be preached. 
with that logos of the cross, which constituted a rationale, its divine reason, which he declares is to be the wisdom of God. What Paul is saying is we receive the wisdom of God. The logos of the cross is conceived by Paul to be the key. Watch this. The key which unlocks the riddle of the universe, number one, solves all mysteries, number two, and reconciles all things, number three. And I write, why is this? Jesus Christ created the universe, so there's no riddle there. The man who hung on the cross made the universe. So the cross solves the riddle of the universe. Why was it made? Where did it come from? The one who hung on the cross made the universe for himself, for his honor and glory, for us. The riddle of the universe, where did it come from? It came from God. The cre- in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. Number two, he knows where we came from, why we are here. He, he knows all about God and the devil, about heaven and hell, sin and salvation. There are no mysteries. No mysteries. No mystery solves the riddle of the universe and the mystery of why we're here. We're here to glorify God, to love our fellow man, to bless everyone we can, to preach the gospel. And number three, the gospel reconciles all things. It reconciles between us and God and then us among our fellow men. The mystery of the universe. Christ made the universe. Solves that riddle. Answers why are we alive? Well, number one, to glorify God. Number two, to bless our fellow man. Number three, to make sure everyone gets saved. (laughs) And it reconciles. I've seen people get saved, they've hated each other, and all of a sudden they're friends. I remember when I was selling biscuits for McCormick's, and I had a customer in Prince Rupert, he was an Italian, and they were Catholics, but they used to really love to, to, to talk to me. And I would I'd be there and maybe I'd be finished my work. I'd be talk. I've spoken to all the stores up there, the Safeway stores and all the small confectionery stores and other stores. And I'd usually go down and have my supper at 6 o'clock. Down, halfway down the hill. They called it the Apache Pass. All the natives were down there. A lot of them congregated. And I'd go down there I'd have my lunch or my supper in this little restaurant and walk down and I'd take my Bible and I'd stand there and I would shout hallelujah three times. And all of a sudden, Brother Adam Manchuk, he lived about three blocks away. He was a Ukrainian, married to a native lady. And he would hear me and he'd come down. And all of a sudden, I'm preaching. I saw this little Italian woman there with her little her white apron on. She said, give him hell, Max. <laughs> she liked what I was preaching. Well, that was really something. We, and then, and then the, the thing was that we get so many people that the police were concerned. And so they said, the taxi people said, hey, Brother Max, we'll move our vehicle. You can use our spot here. So I'd stand where the taxi would be and preach. At 9 o'clock, the show was up there, two blocks up. It was just coming out. I, ca- I catch the ones coming out, and the ones going in came down to hear me. So I was in competition to the movie. <laughs> I was... But her husband told me, we're Roman Catholics, and I've had a partner. He said, 
he ripped me off. He stole $40,000 from me. What should I do? I said, pray for him. <laughs> so I feel like taking a hammer with me. I sit behind him. And when they do the mass, I'd like to just, uh, I said, don't do it. <laughs> Two Catholics, partners, one stole $40,000 from the other guy. I said, give your heart to Jesus. Some will say hallelujah. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Father, the fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with each one until Jesus comes. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee. Be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Give thee strength. Give thee healing. Prosper thee and protect thee. Bless thy family and thy home. In Jesus' name, amen. For 50 years, Pastor Max Solbrecken has awakened the conscience of his audiences through the anointed proclamation of the claims of Christ who said, No man can serve two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon. The truth is, you are either for him or against him. You cannot remain neutral. Great costs are involved in spreading of Christ's gospel. Please consider investing in this ministry. Contact Max Solbrecken at MSWM, Box 44220, RPO, Garside, Edmonton, Alberta, T5V1N6, Canada. You have been watching the Come Home to Jesus television ministry with Canada's preacher man, Dr. Max Solbrecken, who has proclaimed the word of God across the world for 50 years without fear or favor of man or devil. Ask for Canada's revival magazine, The Cry of His Coming, when you write. Invest in souls by supporting this end time ministry. Please contact Max Solbrecken at MSWM, Box 44220, RPO Garside, Edmonton, Alberta, T5V1N6, Canada. Oh, God.